Hello, everybody. Welcome to Comunica, a place where we talk about communications, leadership, and culture. And my name is Daisy Sedeno. I'm your host. And today we have the author of True Leadership, The Ten Universal Laws, Dr. Samore. He's here with us today. Let me bring him to the to the. Uh, uh, uh. Welcome. How are you? Good morning. Doing really well. Happy to be here to talk about leadership. Exciting topic. Well, thank you so much for accepting the invitation. Tell us a little bit about your journey because you come from education and from there you decided uh, there was a great opportunity to talk also about leadership, but about your journey first. I'll be brief. Uh, spent 35 years with the school district of Palm Beach County, but I have a lot of leadership experience in the private sector as well. So I left the public sector on a couple of occasions from uh, the, the public sector to the private sector. And one of the reasons I did that is because I would hear overhear conversations of my brothers and friends who were in the private sector in leadership. And I thought, you know what? I want to test myself. I want to do those things. I want to be held so accountable that I could be fired tomorrow if I don't do a good job. Mm -hmm. And so I actually went into that mainly to learn those that kind of environment, that culture to where you really had to perform and you had very little safety net. Exactly. So the first question is first, tell us a little bit about the book. Uh, what are we going to find in the book? The book, True Leadership, I was surprised to discover that really almost no one's used the term true leadership in a book of all the millions of books. One was used to describe something with regard to the Catholic religion. So I thought, okay, mine is really about leadership, leadership. And what it is, it is the 10, what I call universal laws that do not change, that are perennial in leadership, whether you're in private or public sector. In other words, if you could see yourself as a leader, really, there are many more leaders than I think we acknowledge because many people that say, well, I'm not formally a leader, but they're in mm -hmm. leadership roles. So what these are, are the 10 things that don't change, that if you follow them wisely and you are willing to learn and you're humble in your approach to where you know you're going to make some mistakes, but therefore you learn along the way, mm -hmm. then you will be a good leader. You will be a true leader. The fact is, though, many people don't do these things. They think they can kind of do it the easier way because true leadership isn't really complex. It's just hard to do because it's simple. Mm -hmm. Certain things that human beings recognize, the kinds of things we need, respect, we want responsibility, we want to take our own responsibility, and we want to have some sense of creativity in the workplace. True mm -hmm. leadership speaks to all of that. And people get confused with the meaning of leadership because you can be a manager, you can be a director, you can be a boss, you know, you can be there and just be doing your job. That like, could be great, but what is the difference when? Is that you're a true leader? Well, let's talk leadership first. Mm -hmm. A person who is a leader can be someone who is the front office secretary of a school or of a corporation. Mm -hmm. uh, a leader doesn't have to have dozens of people that they're in charge of. A doesn't leader mean. has to have followership or followership. In other words, leadership does not exist without followership. What I mm -hmm. mean is you might see yourself as a leader. You might even have some sort of leadership title on your business card but if people don't really follow you you're really what i call uh, an, a lino l-i-n-o mm -hmm. a leader in name only in mm -hmm. other words yeah, you call yourself a leader but no one follows so a leader uh, is someone who has an impact or influence over other people or the power to influence other people so parents are leaders children can be leaders of other children so leadership emerges pretty early on in a person's life, but some people become leaders over time. When people ask, are leaders born or are they made? Exactly. It's really both. Some people have some innate skills, which are perfect for leadership, and other people have to learn those skills. So when someone says, well, a person is a leader because that's just who they are, that's kind of true, but you really can develop leadership skills to become a leader when you yourself may not have thought you could be. Exactly. Can we, uh, how can you maybe cre create or spot a leader? You say that person has the potential. 
can you how can you kind of figure it out okay this person i can work with to yeah. take them to the next level well the truth is it, it, human beings have always had whenever you put human beings together and i talk about this in true leadership the book it's early on in the introduction when human beings gather we have as human beings we have this propensity to gather together we're one of the few animals that really requires that for um, in large numbers, we require that for both our happiness, our safety, and our longevity. So, mm -hmm. for example, you, you see ants, believe it or not, you know, they get together in large communities. Human beings create cities. No other creature does that. Even our closest relatives in the nature world, the upper primates, orangutans, chimpanzees, and gorillas, they will get together in smaller groups and protect each other. And they will fend off other groups of like upper primates that may threaten them. But to have this large number of gathering, this is something humans do. And whenever humans get together, and you and I have seen this, and all of us see this, if you get together in a group, it can be social. It can be at work. If there's two or more adults put together to work on a project, a leader starts to emerge. It's mm -hmm. natural to where it's people, and, and two leaders may clash, or people that want to lead that group. So there's a natural tendency to have, for someone, typically, when humans get together, to take on the leadership role, to start mm -hmm. taking charge of things or being willing to encourage others to make decisions. The challenging part of being a leader is you're taking on a responsibility to guide others, which is not always good. Because if you assume the leadership role, whether it's of your family or people at work or a project or three other people, Cub Scout trip pack or whatever it might be. Mm -hmm. You are taking on the responsibility to guide them. And therefore, it's kind of like um, what Spider-Man uh, was told by his uncle back in the, you know, the original movie, which is uh, his uncle told him with great power comes great responsibility. Mm -hmm. So if you have the power of leadership or you're in a position to show influence, you also have great responsibility responsibility. You owe the other people something. They depend mm -hmm. on you. There's a trust. And, and the last thing I'll say is, um, and then we could talk about how you kind of spot this. Uh, the last thing I'll say is trust is required for leadership to exist and certainly for true leadership. There has mm -hmm. to be trust in and among the people who are part of that community for a leader to be a true leader. So mm -hmm. spotting a true leader is one thing, or spotting a potential true leader is mm -hmm. one thing. The difficult part is whether they want to take the job on. Yes. Now, research, which is what I do with some of my time, I'm a researcher, public speaker, author, and so forth, consultant. Not everybody who has leadership skills wants to do that. They don't want the responsibility. And therefore, mm -hmm. because they understand that that may not be something that is pleasant to them. They don't want to have people depending on them in some way. So, for example, in the school district, in private industry, in public industry, you will find a number of people who have leadership tendencies, skills. They have the sway. They, when they speak, mm -hmm. you can hear people, you can watch people listen to them. Exactly. Whatever they say. It's like, okay, wait a minute. Uh, you know, Daisy's talking. I, I want to hear this. And they may not say it loudly like that, but that's easy to to observe. But if you and I've done this many times, I've developed many leaders, many of whom are leaders themselves in, in fairly high levels. Having the talent and having the disposition or the desire, you have to have both of those together. Mm -hmm. And uh, sometimes the desire is not there and you really can't force anyone to become a leader. And sometimes you have to, in, depending on the situation, you have to show up as a leader because sometimes the occasion, and then you see, wow, I didn't know you were going to, you know, be that force in that project or in that situation. But there's also a, an element, and I, I'm telling all of my own story, that people had to empower me because you don't believe or you don't think, okay, I don't know if I can really step up into doing that. And that was, you know, really early in my career. And I had the opportunity, people seeing me differently. And how, how do you empower somebody who is like maybe 
not only young, but it's also like maybe hesitant, but they have the desire, but they don't how they given the to give them the agency that empower them. Well, you said something very uh, powerful and key, which is when you talk about empowering, empowering isn't taking all the power you can. Empowering is giving it away mm -hmm. and helping others share that because at the end of the day, one person can't control everything. So developing other leaders around you is the greatest way to utilize and show power is to share power. Now, mm -hmm. there are those leaders, and in my book, I talk about five levels of leadership. And when you look at the five levels that I describe, of course, one is a leader that's not effective. A top leader is one that is very effective or like a true leader, we recognize those leaders and the leaders who protect power, who guard power, who keep small groups of people around them that they trust and they don't trust other people. This sort of environment is toxic. And at the end of the day, it doesn't develop leadership. Um, one thing that you mentioned, which is part of empowerment, is having someone who believes in you enough to mm -hmm. give you that power, to guide you to coach you. And I think at almost every level, all of us who have influence over or impact or the potential impact of, over other people, that is a certain sort of power. And then we're in the position of having to decide something that's really key, which is you have the power of one. There's only you. Each of us has this power of one. In other words, Daisy doesn't really have power over David necessarily or vice versa, but da Daisy can't control Daisy's decisions within her sphere of her life. I have the same. So when we have the power of one, are we in a position to make a difference? Are we in a position, position to work with someone, to give them that opportunity and then coach them along the way? And the truth is, most of us do have those opportunities. The challenge is some of us think we are afraid of coaching someone for fear they may take our jobs or they may take mm. our positions. That's just bad coaching. Uh, there are, and in my book, I go into how in the 10 universal laws, this is done. Because at the end of the day, we are all better off with more true leadership than less true leadership. And in today's world, we have a shortage of true leadership because we really haven't had true leaders guiding those who are attempting to be true leaders. Mm -hmm. It can be done. Humans are still very much the same as we have been for centuries, but leadership is in a crisis mode, in my opinion, right now. Mm -hmm. And well, the landscape of America is changing rapidly. So the, what we see uh, when it comes to corporations, when we come to different organizations across America, we need to see also that reflects the demographic of the community so what do you have to say about that because there are some communities that maybe we need to empower them to create that space create that, that momentum create that place where they are able to de develop develop grow and just become so how do you what do you say about that well everything you said is 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 a very topical issue we live in a climate now where certain parts of the country including florida right now the whole notion of the, that entire word diversity is one that's in, in some sectors is kind of a word you just don't say publicly but that's silly because at the end of the day we're different from each other and before i kind of address how we go about doing that a i will say it's important and mm -hmm. b again the power of one every one of us has a chance to make some difference in that but i would caution people about that term and i use the word diversity equity inclusion because those things are important and they exist and I, I i promote those but diversity is more than optics and i talk about that in true leadership some people are happy to just think well you know what if i go after this and kind of the disney it's a small world everybody has a different shade of skin and different clothing and okay well i'm done no, diversity is a much more uh, uh, in-depth and mm -hmm. uh, expansive interpretation. So, for example, a lot of us forget about diversity of age. Of course, we think about diversity of sex and gender. We want you know, men, women involved. Uh, 
But do we have diversity of thought? Mm. Do we have diversity of um, where people come from, their roots, their, their journeys? Because if everyone or most people in an organization come from a similar journey, this part of the world, this kind of lifestyle, this sort of income level, then it produces a certain kind of person, which no matter what they may look like on the outside, that really isn't diversity. So I, I think that we owe it and we can find diverse people. And I mean, in my book, I list at least 18 kinds of diversity, which are important. Uh, and, and I myself modeled that as a leader to where I created the most diverse group of adults in my organization that existed in the 10th largest school district in the United States. But that group represented 65% bilingual, and it wasn't just Spanish English, which is important. Mm -hmm. yeah. But I had diversity of age, point of view, gender, nationality, 17 nationalities in the adults, and I sought them out. So Daisy, I think what happens is some people kind of quit easily or quit early. Mm -hmm. They think diversity is optics. Okay, I'll hire this person. I get one Latino doing this or I get, <laughs> you just started the process. You really haven't done much with it. And then the second piece of that is hiring or bringing diversity in all these definitions mm -hmm. into an organization. Your job isn't over. Because one of the things I work on is how to deal with people of different cultures, different backgrounds, different points of view, diverse people, truly diverse, mm -hmm. to work together. To work because together. we have certain assumptions. I'll give you an example. Time. Not a, if you have different cultures in an organization, if you have a diverse organization, you have people who see time differently. And that's just one example. Yes. If you say the meeting starts at 9 o'clock, what does that mean? You might. So one of the things I advise in, in this book is because you may have very different views, you know, coming a few minutes late is OK. And others, it's not. Um, I say go with cell phone time. Everybody has a cell phone at, at work. We use cell phone time. Wow. There's so much we can cover. Leadership is one of my favorite topics. Like I told you before, I have a master's in leadership because I know how can be an before and after when you know this, when you understand how powerful it can be for your organization and for your life for as a professional. Sure. And I think this is a very important topic. I am really excited to see uh, the book. You can find it in Amazon and you can also go into the website, davisamore.com, correct? That's correct. Yes, and here's the book. Through leadership, the 10 law, the 10 universal laws. If you can tell me one law that is your special one, there's one that you just, uh, I mean, maybe you have more than one, but one that you can say, this one is one of the most powerful in my book. Just you mentioning know, it. The one I'll start with that I'll, I'll mention is universal law number one, which is job one never changes. And what that is is, in all leadership, the most fundamental and important recognition is that relationships are center to true leadership, good relationships. Every true leader sees relationships as the epicenter of a good organization, of leading people together. If you don't know people, you can't lead people. And relationships will always be the most important factor in all leadership. Wow, I love it. I think we're going to end like that. If you don't know people, you cannot lead people. Well, thank you so much. Thank you very much, Daisy.